Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Cooter Villa channel. I'm Scott Cooper, and I'm here with Noah Fisher and Tommy Lazaridis to review Aston Villa versus Lille from the quarterfinal first leg of the Europa Conference League. Yep, it's been 40-odd years since uh, Villa were in a quarterfinal of a major competition in Europe, and we got the win. It's a slender victory, though. We're still all to play for in France next week, and we'll be bringing you all of that. And much more after this. Okay, and welcome back, and um, thank you all for joining us on recently on our live shows. This has been this. We're going to do a more of a old school recorded one here to discuss this match, and um, what a match it was. What a build up, uh, Tommy. I'll go to you first. Um, it was uh, same same lineup as uh, the match against Brentford on the weekend. Probably said to the uh, the players that maybe let us down there would go out there and. Do us proud and um, redeem yourselves. And um, I thought for large periods we did, but um, again, vulnerable at the back. And they did get that away goal, uh, but there is no away goals anymore. So we can count our blessings that that's the case. Yeah, and Dick Kitte looked pretty good for them all game. Um, you know, let's not let's not discredit how good of a side Lille are. You know, they're always in the mix. They won the the league on a few years, you know in the last decade. So, pretty good side, right? Um, you know, but all in all, I think we're able to nullify them. Uh, you know, their attack. My great man Jonathan David. Thank thank goodness we have the the oracle, uh, Emmy Martinez, the at the helm. Right? Um, yeah. Defense, yeah, a bit shaky and wobbly. I don't, we really got to uh, and again. I think. Um, Diakite was Carlos's man. I don't want to start negative, but it was Carlos's man, and Carlos didn't even jump, and um, maybe could have at least put a contest up for the header. But you know, it's a great header by Diakite. He obviously got the block, I think, to Ollie's second. What could have been his second goal? Um, mm. Ollie's just scoring for fun. I better start pre-ordering that. Put in my order for that shirt. Um, you know, he's scoring in all comps. John McGinn, you know, redemption. Uh, Bailey's just doing Bailey again, being Bailey. Uh, B A U, I guess. Um, yeah, no, it's just great to get the points. I think I predicted nil nil, so I was probably the furthest off from our predictions. And it's just great to get the win and going to the, go to France with momentum, right? These little croissant fuckers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, and uh, look, um, Lil are a very good team, as Tommy said, uh, Noah and um, uh, Paolo Fonseca, <laughs> their manager, was actually my first choice for Villa manager when um, Steven Gerrard was fired back uh, 18 months or so ago now. But Unai Emery was my second choice. I'm glad uh, my second choice got the job. I wouldn't swap him. But I think he is a very good manager. And we saw in this little team that probably have a similar uh, wage bill to someone like Bournemouth or Brentford, right? You know, they've got some good players, but, you know, they don't have the same sort of money as a lot of the Premier League teams do. And he plays some good football and with some, you know, really interesting players. I thought Good Good Monson for them was good. I mm. thought Haroldson, Bentaleb, um, you know, they had some um, really good performances in there and causes a few issues. But like like um, Tommy said, Emmy Martinez to the rescue. Yeah, what a player he is and how lucky he he plays for us. It's it's crazy how things go, Scott. He was, you know, backup keeper for Arsenal for so long. We played against him in the championship when he was at Reading, I believe. He was on loan at Reading. Mm. Um, the first yeah. game we saw on Tyro Mings, he played in that game as well. Um, to think those guys be future teammates, a World Cup winner, and it's the, the world just does funny things <laughs> and it, it's just weird when you think about it but he's just amazing and i'm so so glad he play, uh, plays for aston villa um yeah. you know he's just i feel so comfortable with him in net i think it's mm. you know, everyone want to see olsen maybe like even goes in these sort of competitions but not in the quarter well, what about our man gauchi 
We want yeah, to see yeah, 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 yeah. our man, Joe Gacci. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would yeah, mind it. I don't know. I don't feel those I'll other two would have pulled off that that first save, right? That's that's world nah, class. Joe Gacci is the best in the world, just about. Second best in the world. Um, Absolutely. He's, 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 if you guys he's, didn't he's, catch he's it. He's the best on the podcast. Yeah, if you guys didn't catch it, uh, Joe Gauchy left his little message on the last uh, Brentford review. So go back and check that out. That's right at the it's start. It's on all the, the socials review. now as well. It's all on all the yeah, socials. So, um, yeah, and, 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 and I gave everyone a heads up before the pod. You did. You did. You uh, <laughs> you uh, let the let the cat slip there. Sorry, uh, sorry, but guys. Uh, sorry, guys. It's all good. It's all good. Um, look, um, but you know it was a great occasion, Tommy. Um, the the crowd was up for it. Uh, I did hear a bit of negativity around that. You know the crowd wasn't at its maybe usual sort of atmosphere, but I, before the game, it sounded pretty good from where I was watching through the TV. And um, you know, look to have these big European nights at Villa Park against the likes of Lille, who are fourth in the league one at the moment. You know, um, and a great team who have you know Champions League experience. Um, that's what we want, right? And then to come from where we were in the Championship, like Noah said before, like. It's it just shows how we're progressing as a club. Yeah, and mind you, we're winning in the Conference League, right? It's not like we're scrapping through. Where's everyone going? We're here. Oh, we're just, sorry. We're... What the hell? Just no, no, it's just producing. You know, he's just putting oh, it on the big screen. The I was just about to swear. I was about to say, what the fuck's wrong with my computer? No, it's all good. Do you, do you, re- do you reckon you can handle the pod by yourself? Saying, oh, I've got I've got NBN fiber to the premise. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Speaking of which, is, is Scott trialing it? What, I feel, Scott, I feel like your Wi-Fi router is a little hamster on a wheel. I feel like he's fine on me. Oh, really? Yours just went like little little loading circle. I must have missed it when I was laughing because no, you anyway, it yeah. Scott, I don't even know what you said, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> repeat, please. I've lost I'm just, the, atmo- the, at- the atmosphere. A, the atmosphere. Yeah, people. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite funny. People laugh and they say Villa Park wasn't loud enough. I said, "Why don't you just turn up your TV? It'll be louder." <laughs> I've always said that's that. A, right? That's a good point. Yeah. You've got a hundred on your volume. You're watching it on fifteen. Put it up a bit. Trust me, it'll. You'll hear Villa Park pretty loud. <laughs> Well, yeah, you don't want to put it too loud when you're watching from here because it's the middle of the night. And, uh, you know, I got up at uh, 10 to 3 uh, Perth time. And, um, yeah, look, to see the um, the lineup like it was, I was a little bit surprised. There wasn't a few changes. I was expecting yeah. maybe Diar- Diaby or Zaniolo nah. or something like that. Um, but, no, he went with the same the same uh, starting lineup. And Ollie Watkins gets us off to a great start. Noah, uh, 13 minutes in. Great corner from John McGinn and a, and a great bit of blocking by uh, Morgan Rogers that Paolo Fonseca wasn't very happy about. What did you think of that? Uh, I mean, very, very, I would have checked it regardless. I don't think there was mm. enough in it to, to rule it out. And Austin McPhee would have been licking his lips when we got that corner and he would have um, been receiving a massive bonus, I think, every time we score a goal from a set piece. And I know, I think Ollie in his post game press conference said, you know, they're sometimes a bit annoying, but. There's such a like like a way to take advantages in games, and since Austin McPhee's come in, Villa have been very very good at set pieces, and it showed again. That's it. Apparently, I I, I heard a stat: the third of goals in the Premier League come from set pieces, which I I found staggering that that many come from set pieces. But yeah, um, they're they're super important, especially for um, you know a team that isn't going so well like Villa are. You know, we're not in the best form. So you've got to make these sort of opportunities count. And um, we certainly did when it was a great header from Ollie. And um, we had a few other chances, Tommy, like Ollie had another volley there that was straight at the goalkeeper, but there was a few one-on-ones like we talked about the, and Emmy, you know, he came out with some huge, huge saves. And it just brings me to my question, which is, do you think, who who's why are we giving up so many chances? What who what area of the pitch do you think is struggling? Because personally, I think it's missing Kamara and that midfield. We just seem to be uh, a team that you can get at pretty pretty quickly, pretty easily. Yeah, to be honest, our best centre backs fucking playing a right back still, which confuses me. So I definitely think Consa should be brought back into centre back. Him and Pau Torres are probably the established pair. I know Carlos is back to fitness and he looked good for the whole 55 minutes against 
Um, however, we played Brentford on the weekend, but mm-hmm. you know, shit the bed as well. It was that fault for one or two of the goals? So I think Ponsa and Torres need to go back to starting pair. Um, that's what we started the season with. We started well. Cash isn't fit. Fucking put Moreno there. If not, Kane, Kessler, Hayden. I don't care. Like, just put it an actual right back at right back. It's not hard, right? Like, these guys mm-hmm. train with Emery. They're well aware of his tactics. It won't change whether he's got Cash there or Kessler, Hayden. I'm pretty sure the instructions will be identical to one another. So, concert back at centre back, I think that'll solve a lot of problems. Yeah, and I think Cash is starting to train again, so I don't think he's that far away. So, yeah, hopefully he can come back in soon. Oh, um, well, well, don't forget next season, and at least we've got that Nettle Kovic, whatever his name is. The, the I think that's uh, Fabrizio Romano says something like the pain is not true, not yet anyway. Well, so he's we still don't have be him again. Don't have him yet. Didn't we okay. Oh, I was going to the guy from Fenerbahce. I think it's someone different. No, I'm talking to the right back that we signed oh, from like Belgrade. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah the guy isn't, from isn't he? I yeah, the, the guy, guy from Fenerbahce. What's it? What's his name for? Some yeah, right. I heard yeah, about so. that as well. Um, let me just have a look because I was. He is also looking, a right back. I was, yeah, I was looking at. He plays all over the pitch as well. Um, I was looking at good? him earlier. Yeah, he's supposed to be really is he, good. Is, is he a FIFA? Is he a FIFA hack? Uh, no, yeah, no, apparently I, I heard him we're in for Denzel Dumfries. I didn't hear that. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Um, Speaking of which, let's do it live. Let's just let's see what the sources are saying. That's the tomato, or, tomato or right. mustard or barbecue? Pop, mas- Master Foods, mate. Master Foods. That's the source. I can't see. Aston Villa transfer rumors. Maybe he didn't play yesterday, but. Um... Plays for Fenerbahce, right? Yeah, Fidea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fidea, that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apparently, he um he started in Holland, played um played in the Dutch league for a while, and played some under um oh, underage yeah. games Ka- for Holland. Ferdi Kadioglu. Yeah, that's and then name. he uh and he's gone to, he's gone to Turkey and plays for the Turkish national team now. So he's supposed to be a bit of a gun. He can play a lot of different positions. So that's um yeah, there has been a bit of talk. Of him, but um, look, um, yeah, let's get back to the game. And I think, um, you know, we we look quite dangerous going forward, Noah, and we um, we create some chances, but you know, it certainly wasn't a uh, you know, a polished performance. And um, they they did score an offside goal, which um, was very, very close. Um, it was just offside without that kind of uh got away with that one a little bit but bef- just before that there was the the second goal which was uh John McGinn uh beautiful strike uh, just after half time um again another set piece um Bailey kind of slips over and uh I don't I think he is trying to pick out McGinn but it didn't look like he he was uh but it, it gets to McGinn and I tell you what that is the definition of bottom bins that shot it was right in the corner and uh, it doesn't matter who you are on the planet, you're not saving them. Nah, John McKim, see if I can do it. I don't think I can, but the, the oh, goggles. Yes. Yeah, the goggles. He loves the goggle celebration, John McKim. That's one of his top. Normally we see him blazers over the bar, actually, but this season he's really been drilling them low into the ground. And Chelsea was and, the other one, right, a, a while ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. but he's just yeah. he's become a, a threat from outside the box. Probably one of our main threats because... I mean, Douglas Luiz used to score bangers, but he's now scoring ones inside the box as well as uh, penalties. But that's that's a great finish and a, a massive goal in terms of the the tie at the end of it, to be honest with you. Going there 1-1 compared to 2-1, it's a completely different story. So, yeah, John McKim, uh, what is, a player. That is huge. That is huge. And um, at that point, I was feeling pretty confident that we'd go on. And I think the second half, we really improved, Tommy. And um, we, we, we gave them far... Less opportunities. Um, you know, yes. Emmy wasn't really called on much in that second half, and um, we were, you know, possessing the ball a bit better. Morgan Rogers, I thought, had a really good game. You know, was um, was driving with the ball, was creating stuff, was trying to slip balls in for Ollie Watkins, and I think those two are starting to develop quite a impressive partnership. Um, and I'm I'm really excited of where that could go, like next season, for example, when Rogers really sort of settles in. And um, I thought his his defensive play was better as well than in previous games. I reckon probably all the midfield got a bit of a kick up the arse by Emery in terms of tracking your runners and that sort of thing. 
Um, and yeah, the second half was good, but we let that sloppy goal go in near the end. The, the header from the corner, and um, yeah, now the the uh, the game is right on a knife edge. Yeah, going to Le Croissant Stadium, you know, it's it's a one goal lead means jack shit, right? And and it, they're going to have home ground advantage. Their fans are probably going to be roaring. Yeah, yep. like, I, I'm almost certain the atmosphere will be a lot a lot more intense there than Villa Park. You know, the French are wild fuckers. That gets an all. Absolutely. I saw their game against Marseille from last Friday night and uh, the crowd is very intimidating, very loud, and they actually don't have a game this weekend. So their next game is against us. Um, so I don't know Super if that's going to be – Yeah, I don't know what, what happened there, if the French League um, gave them the week off on purpose to, because they're in, the, in Europe. But I'm not sure why yeah, they don't a have one. a game this weekend, but um, – you know, we've got a massive game against Arsenal coming on Sunday. And, um, you know... One nil, uh, baby. Got... One nil. <laughs> well, I, I hope be you're good. right because... So do I. Um, and, you know, Arsenal got a massive game against Bayern next week in the return leg of their Champions League right, match. Mate. So maybe they rest some players. Maybe they, you know, are looking ahead and they take their, you know, take their eye off the prize a little bit. I think bit, they but... learned from us, to be honest with you, Scott. I think they learned from what we did against Man City. Well, possibly, yeah. I, I th it's obviously going to go, be a tough game. We don't have a, a great record at the Emirates, although in the first ever game there, we did nick a point with Olive Melberg, I think it was. Got a late equaliser hey, back in the day. The Benteke, uh, what about the Benteke and Agbonlahor show when they tore him a new ass that time? I do remember that game. And that Antonio was... Luna. Oh, yep, Tony that... Moon. <laughs> Tony and then most Tony. recently, Watkins and, and Grealish. Watkins and Grealish. Uh, yeah, it was it? It was an goal. Ross, Bar Ross, Ross, Ross Who? Barkley Who? and um, yeah, that was a great yeah. game. That one during COVID. It um, was. It was the three nil. Um, so yeah, I guess we have picked up some points there from time to time. And um, absolutely, you know, clapping. why not? Why not? Why not? Couldn't we do? It? We couldn't do it again. So we can. Uh, yeah, they but, just, um, they just went sitting want, first at that time. <laughs> I want to ask you guys, and I I know that we do some silly predictions from time to time, like. Noah predicting 5 0 against Brentford, and Tommy's predicted some crazy results in the past. But if you were going to cut this little match up from, from now in a percentage wise, who what would you give the percentage between Villa and Lil going into that second leg? 55 to go through. 45 to Villa. It's close. It's 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 a it's close. Scott. There's one goal in it. I think it's, it's a, 50 it's 50. I think it's I think it's the 50, only reason 50. the only reason I went 55 45 is because we have a goal advantage and I think that puts us a little bit ahead. I but know we don't take sponsorships. They... We don't we don't take sponsorships, but maybe let's get B365 or someone to sponsor us. We can do the live odds win loss draw. <laughs> <laughs> well nah, but what, 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 what about the Tommy 365? What do you think? Uh what, <laughs> how how would you divvy up the percentage into who's gonna go through to the semifinals? Does it go to pens if it's a draw? Extra time and pens, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, think, I'm, I'm, I think I think it'd be like Lil twenty eight percent. I reckon the draws like forty something percent and whatever's left to us. I think I think it's going to be a draw and pens. It's a different atmosphere there, and like they 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 can score and they've got a lethal strike force. That you know if that offside goal was in, it's two two and we take it there. I think yep. I, I think the chances are probably more in favour of a draw. I wouldn't want to back Lil, but as much as I say I do. Um, I think it's, it's well, going to go. A draw, go a draw means that we go through, right? Yeah, a draw means. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Is that well, what you're then, saying? I, I think I think it's a nil nil there, and we go through on on the one goal difference. Yeah, I think it's going to be low score. Owen, I spoke to Owen before the pod, and he thinks he's going to go to extra time. So do I. I think, I think penalties. I think we could mm. see some some Emmy magic in a penalty shootout. Oh, but... just whips his dick out or something before they shoot the first <laughs> one. Just throw, yeah. just throw them right off. Just <laughs> you know, uh, it's happened in the MP. It's happened in the NPL, yeah. Uh, uh, Chris Theodoropoulos, I think he was for Heidelberg. It was them versus mm -hmm. Bentley Greens. And the first pen, keeper just runs up and boots the ball, takes a yellow, and the guy missed the first one. So the really? momentum was already in favour of Heidelberg. But yeah, United. Crazy. Scenes. Well, well Emmy Martinez scenes. did it in the Copper America semifinal against Argentina versus Colombia. He yeah. started getting into... Um, Yeri Mina? Yeri Mina, that's right, from Everton. And he's... And he's yeah, he... There was some uh, there was some 
I can't remember Arthur's exactly Arthur. what he said to him, but there was there was something they had something go on in the past, and he he brought it up, and then and Emmy actually you know, apologized to him after the game, I think. Yeah, a little bit down the know, line. He he loves his shit in and we'd love to see it if we if it means going through. That's and um in the other games, uh, uh. Olympiakos beat Fenerbahce 3 2. Oh, I watched the head. I watched this this morning. Fenerbahce mm. came back from being 3 0 down. Olympiakos were destroying them. They've got these yep. Portuguese dudes. They're doing the good old Shakhtar. Are they? Okay, they're doing the, yeah, it's, it's the, Brazil- the Wolves, are they? They've got yeah, the- I think it's Brazilians or Portuguese. They're, they're just going all out with their Sanchez and Flores and Ramirez. Well, Scott, well I what do you what- said before the game that. I would have probably preferred Olympiacos, but that game again is is still up for grabs. I'm sure. I, I will take Olympiacos instead of Fenerbahce any day of the week. Yeah, yeah but the Fenerbahce fans turn chatty. quick. They turn quick. Right. Yeah, that's a Scott, horrible place to go. Though. What are your thoughts on the coefficient right now? I was going to get to that, and yes, that's not, yeah. good at, not a good night for the coefficient. Not a good week, really. Um, we were the, we course, were the we, only English team to win. Exactly in the first and, leg. Um, yeah, but Leverkusen's losing. a hard Leverkusen's hard for West Ham. And but Liverpool's even Liverpool, bullshit. they got Liverpool clapped by yeah. Atlanta. Atalanta. I know that that's the that's the big surprise. I mean, I still think Arsenal can and maybe will beat Bayern. Um, uh, but you know, I'm not. That's another fifty fifty game, and I think Man City will beat Real Madrid. But um, I don't think like West Ham will win. And, can we slap a bid in for Skamaka from Atalanta? Bring him back to the EPL. He was wrong with the wrong claret and blue. Did you see that goal he scored? I think the first or second one. It was just Beautiful. this side foot volley. Oh, my God. Insane. Yeah, I've, I've always thought he was a good player when he, when he was a um, – I think he was, was a – Fiorentina? Uh, Fiorentina, or yeah, before. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, but he only scored three goals in the Premier League last year, one against us, Yeah, but, but they were rotating him and Antonio. He didn't have a consistent mm. run of form. Look at a team that starts him. Get the best out of him. Knows where the net is. Good forward always knows where I think, the net I think is. We have, I think we have a very good striker as it is named Oliver Jordan. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he'll want to play second fiddle. And, and I like Duran. You know, I want to see Duran give him some more time. You see Duran was in a car crash yesterday. Yes, he was. He I did crashed see that. His, uh, crashed his Beamer. And, um, Looks like he was going pretty well, fast. Was okay. The whole front, so, the whole front missing, mate. And he was trying to crash into some center halves when he got on the pitch as well. But um, shock and horror, but I love it. Unfortunately, we didn't really, he didn't get a chance late on. Um, you know, because if we got a third goal, that would have been huge. And, um, you know, it would have been massive going in with the two goal lead to, to France. But look, it's one, it's a one goal lead. It's, um, you know, this is going to be a tense game. But I think we are the best two teams left in the competition. So it was never going to be an easy game. And if we can, come out on top and why not, then I think we can beat Olympiacos or Fenerbahce or Fiorentina or any of these teams left in the competition and um, we've got a great chance of winning it. So, uh, Did you guys look, see the special guest there as well? Yes, we had uh, two future kings in the crowd, uh, William and I George. I think George might huge. be a Villa fan now. He was wearing a scarf. Oh, yeah, he's um, a Villa fan. I know he was a Villa William... fan back when we played Norwich. Norwich. Back in, uh, yeah, but I know... Yeah. I know, I know I know William was like he wasn't going to force him to go for Villa. Why would you like not, his... mate? I disown the yeah, little because... fucker. <laughs> yeah. Well, Harry Harry goes for Arsenal, and I think Charles goes for Burnley. Is Harry the one that's dating Meghan? Oh, Harry, Harry's a knob, though. Like, come on. Wait, is, ha- is yeah. Harry dating well, Michael? Yes. Yeah. yeah he no, doesn't know what he's married. fucking they're doing. Married. The guy's hallucinating. <laughs> <laughs> but I think King Charles, King Charles is Burnley, and then but they're all. I don't think they ever have a really set. King team. Charles Burnley. is Burnley. I'm pretty yeah. sure. I'm pretty sure. I I read that somewhere. So King Charles well, is he's really never going to force so. anyone. But seeing him in did a the, did scarf, the Queen, makes did happy. the Queen have a team? I could. I can find out. I don't know. I, 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 I say, think. I, I think she would. used to um, try and stay very neutral and things like that. But I. I, I don't know. I. I thought yeah, William was the only one that actually choice. came out and said his team. I didn't know that. Um, William support uh, Harry supported Arsenal, but that yeah, kind of Harry makes sense because he is a knob. Yeah, so that kind of checks out. Um, but you know we've got the best royal, and uh, we definitely and, do. And and the future king, mate, Arsene. Two yeah, of them. Good. Imagine that. Can we can we get like can they sponsor Villa? Can they you know just run a few yeah. loopholes? They're the king for fuck's sake. They can change exactly. the constitution can... and parliament. 
I think we so. need get FFP around. except for Villa. Yeah. FFP except they, for Villa. Yeah, why don't we get like the royal family sponsored on our shirt and they just give us like three billion pounds, like, <laughs> and then that can come off FFP and we can spend whatever we want. Yeah, that, you know? that when he becomes still, king, when he becomes it's king, you'll make a rule that Villa can't right. be affected by FFP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love that. I, I think, that and I think, great. yeah, but that, that's just a drop in the water for Newcastle's uh, owners, the the Sultans or the Sheiks. There's so yeah. much money on that side of the world, the Middle East. I feel like no one it's knows crazy, about isn't it. it? Like they're never brought up in any of like the wealth calculations. All the real money's in the oil. Mm, like Aramco is yeah. the biggest company. It's worth two trillion dollars. Yes, yeah. I was uh, reading up on the Sultan of Brunei, and that guy, poof, he's got some serious cash Ooh, as wait. well. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you do with that level of wealth? You know what I mean? Like, a one billion is a shit ton. Like, that's like generational wealth set. Like. What do you do when you got like a hundred or, or like a, a million of them, right? Whatever. Thousand. You do whatever you want, and unfortunately, yeah. some of those people can get pretty, pretty evil, pretty crazy. But that's for another pod, I think. Um, but what we will say is, we've done our predictions for the second leg, or have we? We'll, no, we'll do them after the Arsenal um, pod. Um, like so yeah, please. Um, join us. Um, we'll be doing another live show after the Arsenal game. Let us know how you feel about this um, this first leg of the quarterfinal. Had you know where would you divvy up the uh, the percentages oh, as to who you nice. think is going to go through? And um, you know, make sure you give us a follow Sorry. on socials and um, check out when we are going to go live next because it'll probably be. I would say uh, Monday or Tuesday, depending on availability. So, yeah, just keep an eye on that, and we'll uh, we'll be coming back to you after the Arsenal game. So, until then, up the Villa, and we'll see you after the Arsenal match. Up the Villa. Up, up the Villa. villa.